This episode of the Gold Blooded Podcast is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. M Y B O O K I E dot A G. Use promo code GOLDBLOOD, one word, to match up to 100% of your initial deposit. get into the Niner garb, we're going to talk, we're going to do this thing that we do when we give you our locks of the week, which really aren't locks of shit since we are the <laughs> we, had wor- a, we had a clean sweep again. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, the, the other way it is. <laughs> so two weeks ago, we went 5-0 and as a team. Wait, did we get current picks or should we get it? Chris, you want to get a text and a little top face? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> what uh, did you just say? I said get a text and a little top awesome. face. Yeah, all right. So, um, so we went five and zero the other week, and now this this past week, uh, uh, you know, maybe we took our, a fucking bath. Maybe our minds, we were thinking about the field goals. I don't know what the fuck we were doing, but what we were doing was not picking the correct the, the crikey, the correct options because we went zero and five. And what's eight. what's our total overall? Uh, 18, 21, 26. I think we're, I think we're Steve above need, 500. Steve needs yeah. a fucking... Uh, 26 yeah. and 29. 26 and 29. That's our overall. Primarily my I feel you're killing us. Yeah, I am. Where am I? <laughs> you're 3 and 8. 3 and 8. But I am Is still... Right? 26 and 29? Am I right? Yeah. I didn't check you. I just took your word for Steve it. Five, this guy yeah. needs an yeah, abacus yeah. or whatever the fuck they call <laughs> Um, What are they called? A abacus? calculator? No, the old ones. 26. Yeah, oh. abacus. Yeah, abacus. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, twenty one, twenty six, and twenty nine. <laughs> what I would like to make mention, Mister <laughs> Fucking Bub Bub, is that <laughs> my record is currently better than the San Francisco Football Forty ers and it will be because they are who got. But we're gonna get into that because I got real beef with these boys. So let's pick this shit so we can get going with what this so, fucking podcast is about. So our five Things losses. Have, yeah, you don't think anything's changed over the fucking bye week, Rob? You're wrong. Things have changed and I'm mad. The losses go as follows. I took the Vikings plus two and a half at the Bears. Joe took Tampa plus one and a half at the New York Giants. Rob took the Packers plus two and a half at Seattle. Chris took the Rams minus three and a half versus the Chiefs. Curran took the Packers minus two and a half at Seattle. I took a plus two and a half. He took a minus two and a half. Oh, I got it backwards? No, he, no you got it right. Oh. From now on, if he types it in wrong, that's what he gets. Ah. Hey, did you see his response to it? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Either way, we both lost, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so uh, this week, um, Chris, could you go back to the spreads quickly? I forgot. I, I had one, but. I'm going back to the well. Okay. Packers aren't going to do it to me twice in a row. I'm taking the Packers plus three and a half at the Vikings. All right. Joe, you care to go? I am going to pick this week the San Francisco football 49ers because uh, the way I see what? Well, 
So I got something to say. Were you taking them? No, go ahead. No, I'll take somebody else. No, I just, mm. I, I didn't. I said I'm not taking them because I don't want to jinx them. Right. Oh, <laughs> so you think so I'm? You're taking the Niners plus three and a half. Yeah, fuck yeah. You want me to take them at minus no. three and a half? Plus uh, three and a half. That's fine. At Tampa. Right. So they're the underdogs, correct? The Niners. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a bunch of twat faces. And Winston is starting. All right, Joe totally took my pick, so I got to pick another. Do you want me to back up off that one and take something else? No, I learned a lesson. Don't do that. Take yeah, the pick. Yeah, there's, you know, there's you, no rules if you against feel picking it, take the it. same. Yeah. I, I did it, and it bit me right in the fucking dick. Yeah, 49ers plus three and a half. That's mm, my pick. Sexy. Plus, this might be the only time you two ever agree on something. <laughs> well, I mean, I could still pick a loss. <laughs> if I pick the Bears or Lions either way... Do I get a win no matter what? Yes, you do. Is that is that? No, this isn't the Turkey Day free play. We don't oh. play with that shit. <laughs> I'll do the Patriots at. I didn't even know what he was talking about. It's the best part. <laughs> We've read that six times. I had no idea. I was like, "What do you mean you get a win either way?" <laughs> I'll, I'll do the Patriots at Jets minus nine and a half. Minus nine and a half Patriots. Patriots minus nine and a half. Did we get Curran yet? Probably not, huh? No. We could update that later on as he gets oh, back to us. All right. Oh, he sent it via the internet. 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 It's in? Pick is in. No, it's not. He said it was, but it isn't. <laughs> Fucking liar. All right. What do we got next? Um, I got some 49ers topics we could talk about. Do you have a mystery quote? I do. Ah, 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 I got ah, a couple. You want me to go sit next to Rob? <laughs> No. Rob's like pulling this gun. All right. Guessing before the quote is read, automatic disqualification, and the quote doesn't get read. Oh, Steve doesn't <laughs> like this game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a wide receiver talking about his quarterback. Uh, Darius Rucker hooting the blowfish. <laughs> Darius Rucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I'm trying to think of a way to a way to. Uh... <laughs> Am I out? He was a- the wide say. receiver was asked um, whether the team should keep the current quarterback beyond the season, and his response was, "Do I think? Yes, absolutely. You've got to look at the numbers. He's a young guy. Look at all the other young quarterback numbers." when they were at his point of his career and where he's been. This hasn't been the easiest place to win, so what he's done is pretty impressive to me. What am I guessing? Buffalo? Uh, Wide receiver or quarterback. Mayfield? Nope. Buffalo? Not Buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) Wide receiver or quarterback. Buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) I guess you could pick the team. Whatever, what the fuck's the difference? Uh, Adam Thielen? This hasn't More? been an easy place to win. No. Oh, Blake Bortles. Nope. God damn. The Bortles! It wasn't Baltimore? Nope. No, they wouldn't ask that. They got Lamar Jackson. Miami? Nope. It's a young guy. Hasn't been easy to win. Jameis Winston? Yep. Ah, you twat. That was Mike Evans on Jameis Winston. You twat. Yeah, that whole back and forth thing was not a great fucking move. Yeah. They should have just stuck with him. Next one is... <laughs> Michael Crabtree. Okay, this is a current NFL player. I had to discipline my son and spank him the other day with a belt. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Why the fuck would you say that? It's 2018. Who thinks that they still have to do that? Or no, but if that's what you're doing, why would you say it? Has anyone met my kids here? Yeah. Uh Have you ever seen my kids ever misbehave or step out of line? Nope. It's been a long time since I've... Do you know how many times I've hit them with anything ever? Well, I mean, zero? Fucking zero. Well, you don't need to. Yeah, but now that you know the right way to raise you children shut after them. Steve, you shut so yeah. I like, expect that to change. It's, it's just not true. Like, if you really think that there is a time and place where you need to hit your kids, you're a broken person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're a broken fucking person. It's just not true. Agreed. You're actually just an evil, bad person. Yeah, like... There may be a time and place where you have to hit a grown person, but not a fucking child. Current um, NFL player. That's fucking fantastic. I love this. It's ignorance. not an obvious it's, answer. Is it, it can't be Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wait <Holy> a minute. <laughs> Let's stop. Yes, Let's it is. Stop. It just happened. I. It, 
Yeah. That's amazing. And he, like, okay. Like, I don't have any reason to ever hit my kids with anything. He's a fucking NFL football player. He doesn't need to hit anyone with anything. But, but he's going to hit... Whatever he's hitting, it's a lot harder than what I'm hitting. <laughs> like, what are you fucking doing, you fucking human garbage? I don't believe that that guy would say that after the shit that he pulled. Yep. That's he got garbage. suspended for almost an entire year because of the first instance. What did he do? He, like, he beat it, it that little proves, fucker bad, right? It just proves that it's not bad decision making. He's just a shit person. Did he get any repercussions this time? He thinks it's okay. I think it just happened recently. So if he thinks there it's were, okay, or he wouldn't have said it. Was this during like a presser? No, it was during a. Uh, I don't know. Dude. A shocking new interview. I, I don't know where the interview is. Of TMZ. Uh, oh, uh, TMZ. Shocking news. Peterson told Master Tef- Tesfatsian of Bleacher Report. Like, he th- he just thinks it's okay to do that. In his world, that's okay. Just where whip your from? fucking kid with a belt because you're a terrible parent Where's that can't from? raise a fucking normal human being. I'll see where he was raised. I like to whip him with a fucking belt in his mouth. Oh, I like right to his fucking, fucking mouth. stab him. Chris, if you're searching for the quote, it goes, I had to discipline my son and spank him the other day with a belt. No, I was looking up where he was raised. Oh, Adrian Peterson? Mm-hmm. I think that. Uh, no, it was Alabama? South. It was definitely South. Uh, because, yeah. it was because I learned I, the term switch. It, it was and definitely I was like, oh, Texas. Yeah. I believe I it was Texas. Uh, uh, Palestine, I was gonna, Texas. Yes. Oh, Texas. Texas. I was going to say Louisiana. Texas. There was a minute there where he really wanted to be a cowboy. Because of that. Taxi sexy. <laughs> All right, what's that? All right. Um, Are we done? No, I got more. All right, this is a Ugh. current defensive player talking about a current opposing offensive player. Um, no. He is trash. No. And I... I'm excited as hell to see that his team is on our schedule this year. Everyone who knows me knows why I'm so hard on him. If you don't know me, that's on you. If y'all look deep into it, y'all can figure out why I was so harsh. That's not a recent quote, right? Uh, That's from the beginning of the season? It's from the beginning of the season, but it's piggybacking off of that right now. Yeah. I know the answer. That's why I was I'm, oh. stall, I'm stalling to give everyone else a chance. Okay. Um, I don't know it because I cheated. I just it it rung a yeah, bell. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Nope. Oh. Oh. This person's much more outspoken this year. Very outspoken. Oh, uh, uh, Eric Green? No. No. The. Uh, I I don't know. I can't think of it. Secondary player. Eric Reed again. <laughs> like uh No, more outspoken about yep. opponents anyway. Uh, yep. Von Miller. Oh, oh Cornerback. Florida. Yeah, like I I'm 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 not I know, but uh, you're gonna have to tell me. Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, yep. that fucker. And I can't ever remember his name. That was regarding quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. Do you have his quote about Ben Roethlisberger who just beat him? No. <laughs> that was a good one, too. He talked about how Ben's okay and something else, and then Roethlisberger had a quote after the game back at him. Okay, so... Why, this, could, what's the backstory with him and Josh Allen? Oh, Jalen Ramsey put out an, a, an interview before the season started, and he basically ran through almost the entire league's co- league of quarterbacks, um, basically what he thought of each one. Uh, there was a few that he praised, but he mostly just trashed every single quarterback, including Jimmy Garoppolo was on there. He said that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't even really that good when we beat the Jaguars last year. It was the scheme. It wasn't him. Yeah, it was all Shanahan. It was all Shanahan. <laughs> nice. All right, so this is a yeah, well, yeah. coach. Uh, uh, there we go. That uh, I'm just current coach. <laughs> it was going to be a long field goal, longer than we wanted with a potential block. We still weren't at that point in the game. You know, you just have to play in one game when where you're up 31 in the fourth quarter and you'll lose. Oh. <laughs> you know it? Yeah. Nope. NFC? This is a good one. Giants? Nope. NFC South? 
Falcons. Nope. Panthers. Nope. <laughs> Saints or Bucks. <laughs> Saints. That was Sean Payton at, re, in regards to running up the score. Being they were winning thirty eight to seven in the fourth quarter, and he went for they it went for down. it on fourth down. <laughs> And they threw a 37-yard <laughs> touchdown pass oh, to on. Alvin Kamara. Why? Why'd they go for it? That was 100% Sean Payton being salty about the Saints getting knocked out of the playoffs last year. Why the fuck it? Why do people get upset? Why can't they just take it? You, you talk why, shit last why year. Should, why isn't he allowed to do that, though? Yeah, of course he is. If you got a problem with it, fucking stop the team. stop yeah. them. Oh, God. Yeah. You, Bill you know, Belichick runs the score up every time. Bob. Now, the, que- the problem I would have if I was a Saints fan is that you're risking injury to Kamara and Breeze at that point. That's the problem I would have. But I would also say that to the other team. Why is your fucking players out there? Right. You've blown out. Why are you risking injury? Malcolm Jenkins flipped them the uh, middle finger after that play happened. (laughs) Yeah. Fuck you. Like, stop us then. Yeah. Go fucking home. (laughs) And that is it for Mystery Quote. Here's a question I have. I'm not an X's and O's guy. I've never written a play. I've never designed a play. But I've never seen this done, and I want to know why it's not so I was watching the, it might have been that, no, it wasn't that game. It was a close game. I can't remember which game it was, but it's getting down to the wire, right? And it's fourth and short, and it's what do we do? Do we go for it, or do we punt it, right? And they decide, this team pull, brings the punt team out. Then they call a timeout, and they bring the offense back out. And now every, the announcers are going, are they going to run a play, or are they going to try to kill the clock, kill the clock, I mean, uh, Get the other team to jump, and we fell victim to the old jump trick this early year, on. Yeah, right? that was one. But so why doesn't brutal. a team do this on offense? Right? You play the little mind game: Are we going to go for it? Or are we not? Then you bring the offense out, right? And then you hard count like five times, like five times right in a row. So everyone's like, "Don't fucking move!" They're obviously trying to fucking hard count us. And then us, everyone knows that at one second on the play clock, you're going to snap it without saying a word. You don't have to say hike. You don't have to say anything. The whole offense knows at one we're snapping it. The defense would never be ready for it. After you, you tried get, to yeah. after you tried to hard count them three or four times, and now everyone on the whole defense is yelling at everyone, "Don't move, don't move!" And then no words, you just snap the ball. Maybe even direct snap to a running back, something like that. Quarterback. Sneak. Are you asking why don't we? Why do has it, it never why? been done? Oh, I've never yeah. seen it done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. that would that would be very interesting. I guess it, my only. It's thing also possible. That you only get it once. Is the thing right? Because right. now they're prepared for that every time. But save that for like a playoff game late yeah. in the late in I some. Mean, I just you know. One, yeah, it's got you got to fall in the right position on the field too. You got to be at the forty-five ish. You know, like that weird in between area. Yeah, where, where a delay a game isn't a big deal. Yeah, like and sometimes you take it on purpose to mm-hmm. kick, have more room to punt. You got to be up. You know, it's. It's all got to fall into place. I just, I don't ever understood that. Like mm. the, like the fake spike. I've always loved this fake spike. <laughs> you know, you call everybody the line like you're going to spike and then you run a play. I love the, uh, yeah, the fake spike. Is, so I like, I like it a lot, but I like when they, uh, you know, I've always loved the fake, the fake throw handoff too. That's my move. Well, the fake spike where they, they don't end up fake spike. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the. We all know what a play action pass is. Yeah, yeah. I like the, the play opposite. action run when yeah. they like fake a pass quick and then hand it Harbaugh, oh, did, yeah, yeah. Harbaugh yeah. did a lot of that. Yes, Harbaugh was fucking, yeah. All right, so what are we doing now here, bro? Um, Kyle Shanahan's message to the team okay, before good. they left yeah, the building okay. was You are playing this year for your spot on this roster next year. Yeah. And as of right now, because of what occurred over the weekend, the 49ers didn't play. Uh, certain losses went our way, and we currently hold the number one pick. Yeah, well, Steve, what I'm going to say here is going to be the last time for this season that I preach the negativity that I've been coming with all year. But what I have to say to you in a time like this, okay, <laughs> you have sat here and you've told me that it's a process and that this and all the fucking just nonsensical excuses that I've had out of you, all right? Well, not, not, not about you, it's just, you know, I know your views are diluted and you have a love and that's great, right? <laughs> but, Steve, I don't have all the examples of times where things like, okay, and I know there were a lot of injuries this year, a lot of injuries, but, you know, last year the Eagles won a fucking championship with Nick Foles, okay? Right? And... 
other team, they did, you know, but years, many years ago, Tom Brady did it. He, he was a dumb fuck. You know, Ben Roethlisberger as a okay, right? I see misses, uncoordination, and just why didn't they? You know, they could have drafted Patrick Mahomes last year. We didn't get him, right? Because oh, they didn't have the vision to see that, right? I see all these mistakes that these two men, John Lynch and the other guy Shanahan, are making. They're letting the defense run amok with oh, so all these things. There's all these problems. And, like I said, I'm not going to go down this road anymore, but I'm just telling you, I feel no better today than I did ever. <laughs> and I, lo- I just have to say this. I love that your example was drafting Patrick Mahomes after we had already traded for Jimmy Garoppolo. Imagine they fucking draft a quarterback at the top Anywhere near the top. Well, after no, that was, that was that uh, was we cho- we took Solomon Thomas. He oh, went yeah. the right. second yeah, or yeah, third okay. round, yeah, yeah. Mahomes. Yeah, yeah. So no, he went number eleven overall. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it I, wasn't last year. That's it, why I got confused. That it was, was the year before. The Shanahan's plan was clearly, "I'm getting Kirk Cousins after yeah. this year," and then it uh, ended again, up changing. I don't need to all the explanations, but what I'm just saying to you so, is: so let me just ask you one question. All right, Papa. Do you think that they should fire Kyle Shanahan? I think that they need to get Kyle Shanahan, and I think Jed York needs to get Shanahan and Lynch in there, and I think that they need to get the riot act read to them. They need to be told, hey, listen. How do you know they're not? How do you know that's not happening daily? You're right, I don't, but I know, but then I think they need to do something to put people like my head at ease, because it's hard for me. I'm having a hard time. Do you think there's ever a place anywhere on the planet where Jed York puts John Lynch in his place? (laughs) I don't. I don't think that's a feasible thing, you know. Well, I mean, I think it's the same thing. Like, I think him I mean, and I Harbaugh with, are a lot alike. I think with, not crazy. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, but I think with with Lynch or with Harbaugh or with any of them for Jed York, it's either they're here or they're not. Like, I don't think Jed York sits someone down and goes, "Listen to me and listen to me good." Like, I I, I think he goes, um, "You're not doing your job. You're fired." Like, I think that's. I don't think Jed York is a Jerry Jones get in your face and yell at you kind of owner. Yeah, I don't think Why? he's got it, and certainly not with John Lynch. John yeah. Lynch will fucking body slam him. <laughs> I'll go this route. So, Joe, let's just say hypothetically, mm. you are the 49ers general manager right now. I, I am another team, random team. I say, I'll give you my first round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you say? I mean. The fact that you're even hesitating blows my mind. No, no, no. I mean, because I don't know what's coming out of the draft, so probably not. But I don't know what that has to do with anything. No, probably not. Okay, I'll give you two first-round picks. My next two. My next two first-round picks for Jimmy G. I don't know, Steve. Steve, I don't know. I'm not a... Look at me. (laughs) We're wasting our time. I mean, to use Nick Foles as an example when C.J. Beathard is our backup is a joke anyway. Like, Nick Foles is a... NFL quarterback that has been a starting quarterback and has been in the league. C.J. Beathard is a second-year player that's clearly yeah, but I'm never not, going okay, to be. I guess what I would, and, and to say that the weapons are even similar no, is a joke. Like, I guess and, what I, I, I'm sorry. What I should have said, I, I wasn't saying that they should have won the Super Bowl, but I was if they can't beat the Cardinals with our backup quarterback, then that's that's that, fair. That, that, that's to, fair. That's more. What that's I'm a fair statement. Yeah, 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 that's a fair statement. And you know. Even to go to say five hundred, you know, is is hard. They shouldn't have been five hundred. But okay, that's a great times in the bay. Um, <laughs> did you see? Did you hear the interview with Lynch, where they were talking about um, uh, Witherspoon showing up Ward when he mm-hmm. put his arms up? Did you hear when they asked him if it ever happened? Yeah, and how how he would handle it? And, yeah, and then they I said, "Did that. you ever?" Because, you know, Witherspoon put his arms up and basically called out Jimmy Ward in front of the whole world saying you fucked up. Instead of saying, whatever, we fucked up as a team, it was his way of saying, I didn't do that. I didn't, it wasn't me. And they were saying, like, that's not, that's not winning culture. And Shanahan came out and said it, and Sala came out and said it. And you don't do that. They don't ever do that. They've never called anyone out, even when they have a bad game. So that spoke volumes that they called him out for it. And uh, they were asking huh. Lynch about it because he played in the secondary, and he's like, "Yeah, you you don't do that. It's just something you don't do." And then they go, "You know, did you ever, did you ever have that problem?" He's like, "Oh yeah, for sure." And like, "Did you ever, you know, threaten somebody?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, for sure." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> oh fuck yes, I did. Have you ever wanted to place a bet 
Yeah. Uh, but didn't uh, because you were afraid to pick the wrong team? Uh-huh. I've never, ever not placed the bet because I was afraid to pick the wrong team. Of all the reasons I've not placed the bet, that's not one of them. This Thanksgiving, it's finally possible for you to get a 100% refund. 100%. Like, who, who, who wrote this copy and thought that that was going to get someone to bet? <laughs> but, like, for real. Uh, because I, nobody has ever placed a bet if they're not confident in who they think is going to. It's just not, that doesn't have, it's not real. <laughs> no, I, no gambler is like, hmm, I don't know, so. It's just, just the amount. Like, it just doesn't even make sense. These fucking guys. I would have to. <laughs> With the Turkey Day free play, you can bet the spread on either the Bears or the Lions. If it wins, you win. If it loses, my bookie will give you your money back up to 250 You literally cannot lose. It's no risk, all gravy. All gravy. So, look, my bookie offers such great product, and there has literally never been a better time to try them out. So unless you your so unless your sports book is offering something like this, I think you should make the switch. I've never heard of a sports book doing a freebie like this. I doubt if I ever will again. Sports books just don't do things like this. These guys are trust trustworthy, fast, and helpful. So I know that they're good at it. Mm -hmm. Good for it. Good for it. That's right. I did that last week, too. They're good for that shit. New to sports betting and have lots of questions, that's okay, too, because my bookie's patient customer service can walk you through. Joe, you can vouch. Walk you through any questions you have about how betting works. That's right. (laughs) It's pretty simple. You play. You, you win, win. You get paid. You I mean, get paid. What is and there to for, walk people through? And for this new turkey deal, the Turkey Day free play, even if you lose, you're going to get the dinero back if you pick the Lions or the Bears. Sign up this week, and my bookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus 50. to jumpstart your bankroll. Uh-huh. It's a great way to bank even more money when you win. That's right. Log on to my bookie right now and use promo code Gold Blood to get fifty percent deposit bonus. That's promo code Gold Blood. You don't need a promo code for your Turkey Day free play. No, you don't. <laughs> if you lose, we'll credit the money back into your account automatically. Mm, so dope. What are you waiting for? It's so dope. Sign up today and don't miss out on the gravy train at my bookie. You play, you win. <laughs> so, over the off season, after coming on, coming down off of our high, Jimmy G, five straight games, blah, 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 we pay the man, we got him locked up for five years, I go on the record in saying there isn't a single quarterback in the league that I would trade for Jimmy Garoppolo straight up, all things considered, uh, age, upside, whatnot. Then he comes out this year. Looks a little mortal. Looks a little bit more. Looks mortal. a little. It looks terrible. Well, that's very untrue. But okay. Well, he didn't plays look, he two didn't and a half great. games. Yeah. yeah. No, it did not look like he did last year. Nah. Obviously, you have to take into consideration the opponent. Uh, that second half against the Lions, the game where we actually won, was very discouraging. I'm standing by. Remember this moment in time, people. Remember the moment in time when we all thought that Jimmy Garoppolo was average. That's all I'm going to say. Remember this. Okay. Trust me. Well, My you know. position on Jimmy G has not changed. You saw what Jared Goff did the other night with Sean McVay. Okay, you take Jimmy G with two healthy knees and you put him where Jared Goff is playing right now. I think you get the same exact result. I truly think that. I think that Jimmy Garoppolo is way more talented than Jared Goff. Yeah, I think that Jared Goff is benefiting from how terrible Greg Williams was. I mean, um, uh, Fisher. Fisher. Jeff Fisher. Oh, he was so Jeff. bad for so long that they just piled up so many first-round picks. You give, And all that talent, eventually. You, give you got to hit on something. Yeah. <laughs> you give Jimmy G. Well, Gurley and Brandon, Donald and fucking yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Brandon Cooks. Who made those picks? Robert Woods. He did. Oh, I didn't know if it was like the GM involved. Sorry. Uh, uh, Cooper Cup went down for the season, but he was great earlier in the year. Give him the same weapons and that entire thing that's going on there, you're going to get the same result. I think you probably get that result with fucking Eli Manning. Uh, I think that's pushing I mean, it. Jesus. I think Goff is good. I think, I think Goff is better than I thought he was, but I still don't think he's as talented as Jimmy Garoppolo. 
I think Goff's strong suit is that he doesn't he doesn't seem to be flustered. Yeah, he seems he pretty just calm seems like a robot. from what I've seen. Yeah. Mahomes is a different beast. Oh, very different. And I don't really know that his play is sustainable. There's like he's not he's great, but he is not great in the way that it's been cemented in our minds forever regarding quarterbacks. No, like, he's great like Kaepernick was great. Yeah, and we're going to see. He's on fire. We're going to see how long that train lasts, or if you adjust, or if if this is the way it's going to be forever. I think that's going to be very interesting. But I, I, I just wanted to bring that up. That uh, I, I want everyone to remember this moment in time where a lot of 49ers fans think that Jimmy Garoppolo is average. That's all I'm going to say. We got, he's off crutches, by the way. We got current picks in. Yeah, my phone is all jacked up. We never got the email. He sent us a screen cap of the email. We okay. never got it. Okay. So what is current's In pick? the email? Yeah, we got it in the email. But I, don't know. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think he uh, hit send after we reminded him. Yeah, but I, what's I his pick? It still. <laughs> what's his fucking pick? It's probably pick some, is... something we all. Oh yeah, heard. it just came through now. It must have delayed this, him sending. Wait, did I leave my lines up? Atlanta. Did he plus do the wrong 12? line? Yeah, he got it wrong again. Oh, uh, twelve. He shorted and a half. himself so, a half point. All right, he gets plus twelve. Points. <laughs> Come you on. better start using ESPN there, <laughs> He pal. showed himself a half He's worse right. than I am. And then his predict. You want his prediction now? No, we'll save that. Okay. Um, I got. I got some more got stuff it. to get to. Um, as of right now, George Kittle is on pace to make 49ers history. Uh, right now, he's on pace for 1,240 yards uh, at tight end for 49ers. Vernon Davis set the bar in 2009 with 965 yards. So that would wow. obliterate the record for most by a 49ers tight end all time. Oh, and so impressive. It would be the most yards by any pass catcher since Terrell Owens in 2002, who had 1,300. Yo. And now that's with all the hype that Vernon Davis was being yep. drafted. That's with the terrible fall off at the end of his career. Yeah. And all the hype from any of the other pass catchers that we've had in the yeah. past. Joe's yeah. beloved Michael Crabtree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another AJ, stat for AJ you. AJ Jenkins. Oh, God. I, you know what? He was so relevant, I forgot about him. Wow. <laughs> AJ fucking Jenkins. <laughs> so oh, bef- oh, Before you go on, okay. I, I'm, I'm only interrupting because I'll forget this and I have to say it. Joe, do you know who Brennan Schaub is? Yeah. You know he played football at Colorado? Did not. Wait, also, yeah, in college or high yeah, school? Colorado. Okay. Yeah, Colorado. Yeah. And he had, some, he had some NFL stuff. Like okay. he had, I, don't, I don't know if he ever got signed, but he was... He could have played in the NFL. Okay, I, he might have I'm, even done like some practice squad what stuff. What position? I don't know. He's okay, big, he's a big boy. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was talking on his his fight podcast, yeah. not not his other podcast, mm. about Colorado and how they need a new coach and fight on they the should kid? they should no the other one. Okay. He's got like a, a just fight one. Yeah, and okay. how they need to go for a big name this time. They missed out last time. They didn't hire a big name. Blah blah blah. And then he's he was like shit talking all the moves they've made like under his breath. And he goes yeah. huh, and these white wide receivers. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. Speaking of, I was like, holy shit. Where's T squared? Oh, <laughs> T squared. <laughs> he don't know. T two. That's right. He Where's T two? You don't know the math. Trent Taylor. <laughs> yeah, that fucking T squared. I, I okay. So T squared. Here's what I got. I don't know where this little exercise is gonna go. It can go wherever it goes. But I got I got three lists. I got a good feeling where it's gonna go. Could go nowhere. <laughs> but I have a list of ascending players from last year regression players from last year and bounce back candidates for next year. Um, the list are goes as follows. Ascending players from last year, which means players that have taken a step want, forward. You want some sort of reaction from us? I, uh, if you want to give me okay. one, you want to throw somebody else in there, you want to disagree. Agree, disagree. Buy so, and sell? Is that how they do it on the... Ascending players from last year. George Kittle, Clearly. Matt Breda, Clearly. Kyle Juszczyk, Clearly. Ronald Blair. Clearly. Those are four clearly players agree on all. that have improved from last year. Not okay. like borderline. Agree yeah. clearly on all. Yes. Okay. Uh, regression players from last year. These are players that have obviously regressed from last year for one reason or another. Marquise Goodwin, Reuben Foster, Trent Taylor, Adrian Colbert, Akella Witherspoon. Yes. Agree on all. Wait, can you run that back? This is deproved? Uh, reg- regressed. regressed. Okay, give me sorry. Uh, Goodwin, Foster, Trent Taylor, Colbert, Witherspoon. Yeah, they could all fuck off and die. <laughs> okay. So Joe's cutting them. <laughs> no, killing them. Killing them. <laughs> I gotta tell you, uh, Reuben Foster is uh, not a friend of mine. <laughs> he, Reuben you know, Foster has you know, played very terrible Ironically, this year. who is a friend of yours in place of him? 
Freddie Warner? <laughs> Freddie Warner's not playing in place of him. Oh. Ooh. Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith. No, I am not <laughs> yeah. saying that. He, he's Ma- getting closer. No, what Malcolm... He's playing good football. What Malcolm Smith is, <laughs> is a hot body. That's it. And, uh... <laughs> You know, He's playing good ball. I'm sure when they draft another linebacker this year, you know, he'll be gone. <laughs> now, these are bounce back candidates for next year. These are players that I believe will clearly bounce back next year. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jerk McKinnon. I, those were obvious, but I threw them on there anyway. <sighs> Marquise Goodwin, Trent Taylor, Ruben Foster, Dante Pettis, and DJ Reed. Those are players I expect to bounce back next year from a lackluster season this year. What? Okay. My only... I would ho- I would love if that happened. Yeah. I don't know what's holding Taylor back this year. I don't know if it's injury or what. It's his back. And clearly. I feel like when they drafted Pettis, it kind of put Trent Taylor in a weird spot. A little bit. Just now because, who knows like, what happens of, with either of their one of type them. of play. I know they're not exactly the same, but they're close enough that I would be like, uh, okay. I mean, if... If uh, well, Pettis uh, Trent Taylor last year has shown me showed me more than Pettis has this year. I, I agree. No, Pettis agree. Has been agree. I just meant the fact injury. that they drafted another guy in that area made me worry about Taylor. Like, why I are think, they drafting that guy? I think that was more of a uh, uh, looking at Pierre Garcon right there, getting old. Uh, definitely his last yeah, year. Why with wouldn't the team. they look for a possession receiver? Yeah, it's just not the same type. The, That's all, it's yeah. just tight. Well, Pettis, when they drafted him, they said that he has the ability to play every single wide receiver position well. That's so fair. I think that's why they. It, obviously, the punt and kick returns was was a bonus, but and, and just his versatility is what pushed him into the second round. Whereas, just as a wide receiver, if he didn't have, come with that full package, I think he would have been more of a third to fourth round pick instead of a second round pick, which is what he was for us. Just versatility gets you there. Uh, fair, and I, I'm just my. If I had a team and Wes Welker was on the team and I drafted Dante Pettis or Trent Taylor, I'd go, huh? That's weird. Yeah, you know, that's all. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's got a. To me, I would bet money on him being better than he was this year. Before I would Reuben Foster, only because I don't know that Reuben Foster is going to stay on the field long enough to play a, a season anymore. Yeah. Like at this point, I have very high doubts of that. Reuben Foster had the uh, he played he definitely played through a shoulder injury for a month straight. I don't know if you ever saw the link that was going around where he has one arm dangling at his side and he's reaching out his other arm to tackle somebody. Ah, Any sane linebacker is using two arms there. He's clearly hobbled. Like, his arm is dangling at his side and he's trying to make a tackle with with his other arm. I just yeah, I got a hard time buying that. Yeah, I think it just like him. If you saw the clip, you'd be like, clearly his shoulder run is into the not 10. right. Yeah, I mean the guy, the guy flops on every play. How could he play through a busted arm if he flops because he fucking got a hangnail? Well, I think he got a lot of shit for last year for going down every single game. I but think nothing really a, changed. He's still pussy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not on been, the train. I would when he's good and healthy and playing good ball, he's great. But the I thing with the this amount year, of time I've seen that is one percent. The, yeah, the thing with this year is even when he's been on the field, he hasn't been great. He hasn't yeah, been yeah. even good. And maybe he is hurt. I don't know. But, I mean, when we've seen him at his best, and maybe it's just because of the suspension. Maybe that fucked this whole thing up. I don't know. But that's still on him. I, oh, it's definitely on him. You know? So I don't, I don't know. You know? I, I struggle it, with it. Next year, next I'm year glad he's gonna, been out of the news. I'm glad for that. I should probably knock on wood. Next year is going to be a big year for him because he's coming off of a, a, a very rocky offseason. He's got to keep his nose clean. He's got to do the full offseason We don't know if he could thing. even get through this thing. This might be harder than him not playing all year. He might be in jail in three months. Well, that's why I just said he needs to get through an offseason clean. Yeah, yeah. Listen, me too. <laughs> well, that's not happening. Never. Uh, I threw DJ Reed Allegedly. on there because uh, throughout the draft, he hasn't played that well this year, but throughout the draft process, uh, I draft process, like I really drafted him, but... Watching his tape from college and seeing him at moments this year really encouraged me because I think he has that attitude, that that dog that you want in your secondary where he's going to play tough as opposed to Akella Witherspoon, he just who just got ripped apart uh, by Dante Whitner. So soft. Is he the softest cornerback in the league? Ooh. Is that his title, cornerback? He might be. I mean, uh, I don't know. If right, that's his position? Corner. Full yeah. Yeah, I, well, I didn't know if they were calling him. You know, the full-on cocksucker. Or yeah, what? Dante Whitner just ripped his game apart, and it was pretty eye-opening. Yeah, so wait, what, why was he talking about him? Dante Whitner is an employee for 49ers, like, uh, game day for NBC Sports Network. 
Like he's an was, actual employee. He's not who, working for. Uh, why are you putting my belt on? I'm just trying it to see if it fits me. What the fuck kind of shit is this? Fuck off. Yeah, kind of whack. Joe's putting on my championship belt. It doesn't fit. I'm just seeing the size. You testing fucking... it for next year. No. <laughs> I just wanted to see if it fit anybody in this room. Most belts, after you win them, you get to keep it even if you lose it. Yes. Like, they get a new belt. You know what? Next, guy. <laughs> next year? No, no, no. Not this okay. one. Yeah, I think we passed this I one. Was gonna, Absolutely. I was going to buy my own. Yeah, it's classy. So, um, <laughs> Class going into <laughs> Tampa Bay, here's a stat for you. The 49ers are on pace for eight takeaways, which would be the fewest in NFL history. The Buccaneers <laughs> are on pace for 46 turnovers. Which would be the most in 18 years. But they'll get out of that this how weekend. Many, how many interceptions do the 49ers have to date this season? Zero. No, to date? This, this interceptions? Year, currently this year. I, yeah, it's got to be like two. It's two. How many does Tampa Bay have? I don't know. One. Four. <laughs> <laughs> what do they got? A bunch of fumble Oh, eyes? my God. They're the worst. They have the lowest interceptions in the league. They have one. We oh. have two, and there's a bunch of teams that have like four. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Something's got to give here. Well, I tell you oh, what, our Steve, offense don't say isn't that. It's it, going to go the other way. Our offense ha- with Mullins hasn't been as bad as it was with CJ, but the Buccaneers' offense, holy shit. Well, like, they can score some points, but they can also turn the ball over five times doing it, regardless of who they have playing quarterback. Here's the thing I don't give a fuck what happens in this game because either way, I'm going to be positive about it. I'm going to tell you going into it. Because if we come out and we blow them out, I'm just happy to watch my football team win. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking short-term basis, we won a football game, I'm happy to watch a fucking win. Especially if Nick Mullins lights it up. Best case scenario to me is Nick Mullins has a great rest of the year and we have some fucking trade bait or some fucking... Or just a competent backup. I think CJ is a competent backup already. (sighs) I don't think you expect any more than what CJ gives you from your backup. I disagree. To carry two... Super Bowl caliber quarterbacks is stupid and a waste of money and assets. Right, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think Nick you, Mullen. Well, well, you, we'll see. you give Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Goodwin and Garcon, and he can get us wins. Yeah, you I, give C.J. Beathard, Goodwin and Garcon. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but look at look at the Packers when Rodgers went out. That guy barely kept them in the fucking. Right. That's what you want from a backup. If you have a Super Bowl winning caliber quarterback, you don't have a great backup. You just don't have the money and the assets to carry that. And if you do, then you trade it for other stuff. The Patriots prove that. That's, that's what you do when you have two great quarterbacks, especially in the in the NFL. Yeah, uh, I just. Yeah. But if they blow them out, great. I got to win, a, watch a win. I'm happy. I like watching my football team win. If they lose, meh. Okay, good. We got a better draft choice. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I'm going to be positive either way. I'm I'm still on the Shanahan train. I don't think firing him is the right move. I don't think moving out from him is the right move. Uh, yeah, I, I hear you. I uh, I, mean, I, I thought your this season opinion. was was th- this season ended for me pretty much when Jimmy Garoppolo went down, and nothing that has come since has really surprised me. Yeah, disappointed. Sure. Yeah, you expect, definitely wanted to win that fucking Ari- both Arizona games. You want to steal one in, at Lambeau. The Giants game, you got to win. Sure. Yeah. But anyway, predictions. Let's let's move this train. That's right. I'm taking a 49er win, 21 to 17. I'm taking a 49er win, um, 10 to 6. Curran took a 49er win, 10 to 7. Come on! Get the motherfucker out! <laughs> really? I'm the one that's mad here. <laughs> that's Chris's go to! This is my fucking territory. So. You take it. Niners 36. <laughs> Tampa Bay 3. <laughs> oh, wow. Steven? I'm taking a win. Niners 34. Tampa <laughs> 27. No. No drama this week, huh? You didn't even make us wait for it? No. <laughs> well, you picked the box? No. Oh, wow. Well. The game is in Tampa, huh? It is. That's odd. We should have won. It's odd. Yeah. It's odd we should have went. No, Tampa, you, you guys ever been to Tampa, St. Pete yeah. area? No. Very it's weird. A cheap flight, too. Very weird place, yeah. Hutter's family was down there, and uh, Uncle Rick was down. is down there. And that's he's the, to victory. That's northern F- Florida, right? Yeah, northwest. It's on the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, I feel like that should be like a completely different state. I, it's you know very, how there's North Carolina, very, South Carolina. Yeah. There, there should be North Florida, South Florida. Yeah, well, but it's, it's like a different universe. It's water. You know, it's on the the 
the beach, obviously. So, but it's like you go out into the you know the the mainland. It gets you know dogs or people over there, or people or dogs or some shit. Keys to victory. My key to victory is the cornerback playing opposite Richard Sherman. Either Witherspoon needs to have a good game, or Witherspoon <gasps> out and whoever's <gasps> playing needs to have a good game. Okay, Stevie B. Uh, I think that the key to victory will be intercept intercepting the the, the most turnover happy quarterback cluster between James Winston James Winston and uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just get one interception by your corner, maybe another by a safety. I mean, they fucking throw those shits around I'll like there's nothing. I'll settle for a goddamn D lineman. I, I mean, a tip I, ball interception. I will say that this week I expect to I s- expect us to see Richard Sherman get tested because Jameis Winston doesn't give a fuck where he's throwing that football. He's throwing that football where he's going to throw that football. He's not going to stay away from Richard Sherman throwing even though his coach like is raping a bitch. Even though his coaches might tell him to. So I think drill that it, drill it he doesn't care if you hole. say no. We all agree that Richard hole. Sherman has played great this season, but we also want to see him tested a little bit to see if he's really all that. I think this is going to be that game where we might see that. Yeah, it's almost like we don't want him. The, we say he's been good because they haven't been testing him, yeah. but that's because they've been testing Witherspoon. <laughs> yeah, so, that's not great for us. They, that, and that, that's, well. that's like a five-star restaurant no, there over there. There ain't even no reason for it's, a test. They just take that. It's almost like we'd rather Sherman not be so good so that they would throw it over there sometimes right. and not at Witherspoon. Right. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to keep with you boys with the keys to victory on the defensive side of the bowl. And what I need to see from those boys is a full four motherfucking quarters. I don't need to see three or two and a half or three and a half. I need to see four full quarters of the defense bringing the pain. I don't need to see him jump out to a hot start like Steve has said in the past. I need a hot start. And I, when I say a hot start, I don't. I want a takeaway. I don't want a three and out. I want a motherfucking takeaway. Can I? Can I? Can I piggyback off of Joe's key to victory? <laughs> Whatever you. I think that another key to victory would be for the defensive unit to come out at the beginning of the game and maybe drag your feet a little bit, um, maybe stare at some butterflies, rope-a-dope. maybe rope-a-dope. do some maybe do some rope dope. What are you doing? Maybe oh. maybe bird watch a little bit. If they're only going to play three quarters, they should play the last three instead of the first. Oh, three. I see. I see. No, <laughs> they got to play all four. Save the good shit for the last five minutes of the goddamn game. They got to play all four, Papa. Yeah, you remember those commercials from the '80s, the war on drugs, <laughs> the one with the parents. I learned it by watching you. Remember that one? Yeah, I learned it to remember listen the one to with, go about a podcast. Remember with the the one with the eggs in the frying pan? Yeah, this, this is, is your, your brain. brain. On drugs. Yes, this okay. this is your brain on drugs. He's like <laughs> dancing and singing, <laughs> telling us how bad everything is, but giggling and partying and laughing. It. And this is your brain on drugs, children. You, it makes you happy. Allegedly. It makes you, it makes you a happy person. <laughs> no, be away. Follow me home. Wait until the first guy's doing 45 and I'm, fuck! The fuck out of my way! Fuck! Calling my wife. Why won't they fucking move? <laughs> what? what makes me happy is Shoe Slinger, and this week's nominees are Ryan Jensen, Riley Bullo, and Ali Marpet. <laughs> This was I, a hard one. I don't know any of these fucking clowns. What's so, this Chris, was a hard can we one. get some visuals? There was visuals? a lot of fucking choices Remember, on this team. Remember, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't play I, Tampa often. Oh, I deleted a lot of names and, like, redid them. Like, I was like, All right. no, this one's got to come off because this one has wow. to. Wow. Remember when we tried to okay. do... Hold on. Remember when we tried to do the power hour? <laughs> yeah, I do. And I know. We suck dick. Let me see. The I final? Suck dick. Oh, that's the first. Does anybody have any oh, gum okay. or anything? Candy and breath mint. Anything? All right, I got a feel for this guy. All right, next. Next. Wow. Oh, I got to go Ryan Johnson. That's my pick. I'm not looking. I got to take my glasses off here. No. Oh, no. Yeah. Ryan Jensen. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, it's so hard. Yes, but it might not have been Ryan Jensen. Yeah. <laughs> it's so definitely difficult. not this guy. We have? <laughs> no, not Ryan Jensen, but Just some other guy that's this guy. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so should I look? Yeah. I hold, on, this... hold on. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, there, are you picking him? Because so, it doesn't matter what I say. <laughs> I feel like we did this caliber a lot this year. 
And <laughs> normally we do this caliber a lot, but we haven't recently. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Then I don't need to pick. All right. Ryan Jensen, it who, is. Who were you going to do? You were going to do him? I know. I wasn't sure, but it oh, okay. doesn't matter. All right. Go down. We'll Let try me, and yeah, get Joe get a good, good first picture. Yeah. Oh, not that one. How about Right that there. Perfect. Okay, Joe. I want, I want you to th- say the first thing that comes to mind, Joe, when you look at this picture. And then go there next. <laughs> This one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Whenever, Uno, go. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm thinking a movie. Slot, right? Yes. <laughs> but also, Rob will know. Oh, Doyle rules. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. But he looks like a fat, healthy, hold on, the mask with Cher. <laughs> Rocky Dennis. It looks like his brother a little bit. Rocky Dennis? It's no, fat. it's not the mask. It's just mask. Look at the fucking tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> the family crest? That, no. that might be, with no hair. <laughs> there he is with Joe's cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I usually come down on the fat white guys, but I think this one is actually one of the better ones. I think he's cool. I think he hangs out with black people. I think he's not a bad person. Drugs. He's got a <laughs> sleeve of <laughs> skulls. I don't. Yeah, I think he's just as shitty as the... <laughs> what? Church is broke. <laughs> Joe's chair just fucking I'm broke. I'm suing. <laughs> I'm suing. This is your brain on drugs. This is oh, my fault. This is your chair on drugs. <laughs> Joe, you broke my fucking chair. I broke the chair. Joe, this is what kind of garbage Joe, gotta, we buy here. Chair, I'm man. sitting on you a bucket. You gotta get a high chair over here. Get a high chair. I think I broke my hand. <laughs> That's karma for fucking praising the fucking shoe slinger. All right, you can write You're this down. To talk about yeah, how sit down, no, sit down and make fun of him. <laughs> Joe just broke my fucking chair. Why am I gonna say I broke it? I was sitting in a fucking chair and it broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, somebody's all skeeted Holy out, squirming shit. around all. I ain't skeeted. <laughs> Sorry. All yacked up, fucking jumping around. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. You're sitting about as still as my one year old. <laughs> Holy di- shit. That thing just crumpled. I, I'm the lightest fucking shoe here. What the oh fuck? That's true. Right. How many, how many Everybody chairs? in this room has at least 50 pounds on how you. How many chairs do you think Ryan Jensen's broke? Oh, oh that's amazing. Can I tell you a story about breaking a chair? <laughs> on someone's head? <laughs> no, way better. I was at a party. And oh, man, I'm sorry, a ton dude. of people at this party, right? There's got to be 50 people at this party. Okay. And this person has uh, an antique chair as their computer desk chair. It's an antique dentist's chair. So it's like made of wood. It's kind of rickety. And I'm, I'm avoiding it. I'm, my personality is this. I see something that could be a potential problem. I avoid it. Okay? I'm not going to sit in this chair because if it breaks, I don't want to be responsible for this $1,000 fucking chair or $10,000 chair, whatever the fuck it is. Right? People are sitting in the chair all night, rocking back in it, moving around in it, and people nearly twice my size, okay? I sit in this fucking chair for 30 seconds. Lapse in judgment, the fucking chair collapses. (laughs) And I get that hot feeling, like when you get caught doing something you're not supposed to do, when you just, you did something wrong, and I'm like... I can't even afford this fucking chair. And I just <laughs> broke it. Like, I literally don't have the money to pay for this chair. And I just broke it. And the right thing to do is to pay for a new one because I was sitting in it. And I didn't do anything. Like, I didn't, like, jump on You know, I didn't do anything to break it. You were it. sitting down. Uh, it was the worst feeling in the world. And I'm like, this so-and-so was sitting in this chair for two hours. And they're three times my size. How the fuck did it break? And this is when I was skinnier on top of it. So, the homeowner... Tells me it's not like a, it's a replica antique. It's not like a, a real. It's not like a one off <laughs> that somebody found from the fucking forties or whatever. It's from this place, Restoration Hardware. You've heard of it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Expensive furniture. Yeah. Fuck right? yeah. 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 Like top of the line, like some Westport shit, you know. So I'm like, oh great, even better. So it is replaceable. I actually do have to come up with the money. Cool. Yeah, which is ridiculous anyway. You're just sitting in a fucking chair. So but one thing, if you smashed it, so what do she, I owe you now? The wife calls. <laughs> calls Restoration Hardware and tells them, you know, I bought a chair from you guys at a party. I'm mortified. I'm so embarrassed. One of my guests was sitting in the chair. Yeah. The chair fell apart. It broke in the middle of this party. My guest was mortified. New chair, free. Nice. 
So How about that? Maybe I gotta figure you out. Gotta get, yeah, get, you gotta get find out where that came from. from. Well, Steve, I'd like to formally the apologize. This is why I was reluctant to do things on the table <laughs> because you know now. You said it, it was the kid. Well, <laughs> uh, well, back to this guy. I don't really have much more to say about him other than he made me break the chair. Yeah, I think the br- the breaking of the chair definitely ended Schuslinger. That yeah. was dr- you, sufficient enough. Can you just click on Ali Marpet. Marpet. That, that, yeah, that's who we were on. He has the best name, I'll tell you that. Like, Marpet? No, not there. No. Who is he? This is Marpies? Yeah. There's, he's just, like, really... Um, Aggressively... Just a big guy, that's it. Like, yeah. He, he's, like a he's not, like, a football guy. He's just a big guy, a so he's a football player. player. He doesn't like black people. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Like, that. he's just... Oh! Like, Go to... The, well, he just looked, forgot it. <laughs> he looks like he, he looks like he's waiting for a load patiently. Patiently. <laughs> Come to my mouth and lips. All right, what do we got next? Emails? Yep. Mm, good, that's not my... Do the particulars. What? Yeah. So, if you want to email us, you can find us at gobloodpodcast at gmail.com. You can leave us a review. That would be very nice. Uh, uh, wherever you leave reviews, uh, usually the iTunes or, or the Apple podcast app. Um, you can find the Instagram at Goldblooded Podcast, one word. Uh, and there is a Twitter sometimes um, mm. at Goldblooded Pod. And get ready because on the Instagram, you're going to see some videos and pictures of the action packed Goldblooded Olympics. Is this the only one with sound? So. Okay, can we start with this one then and we then that really one? And just, yeah, just be, leave uh, this one for after? Oh, then. this one's long. Okay. So skip that one. Go with. Go with the. I just don't want to skip Madison. Yeah, order. you got it. You got to do Madison, Madison in, order in order here. All right. All right. Oh, I gotta bring it up. Bye, bye. The first Madison is where we're starting, Joe. No, I'm gonna do it with my phone. Drugs. <laughs> um. Oh. Stand by, boys. Um. The first Madison. Wait, it's not Chad Shoner. No, we're we'll skip that. We're gonna go back to that. Oh, okay. Because Chris has to leave, remember? Oh, okay. So Matt Matterson, my response? Yep. Yeah. Part one. Okay. My response to episodes 169 and 170, part one. Okay, crew. I got some things to say in this email, and I will do my best to keep it short. (laughs) Number one. After listening to 169, my thoughts on firing Robert Salad are... I'm on board to to firing him now if there is someone to replace him... But if not, then wait till after the season is over. Two, gold blooded podcast Olympics prediction. If the events are <laughs> if the events are held in a domed field, then Steve wins the longest field goal, but winds up being one yard short of Rob's record. If the events of playing in an open field, then everyone gets muddy, and Joe in America win. Wins the longest field goal, uh, fifteen yards shorter than Rob's record. All right, Madison. Well. I appreciate your your thoughts, but you were wrong. We did not play in a dome. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you want me to read next? There's always next year, Steve. Uh, the next Patterson. Next, Maddie Matterson. The voice Matterson. Yeah. Responses to episode, yeah, 169 and 170 part two. That stinks. I'm sorry, Papa. That's because I fell. Um, I heard that someone is protesting if there is no guitar in my recordings. Am I right, Bob? <laughs> or Rob? Is he right? Oh, yeah. I was hoping to hold on to this and send it just in time for Christmas, but Rob is making me play this card now. Rob ruined the game. Rob. He's always impatient. Hopefully you won't protest after I don't include music in the background of my recordings. I gotta take it easy on the creativity once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that means there is gonna be guitar in this. Oh, yeah. You're no. welcome. There's Or synthesizer. You're welcome. I have a feeling it's synthesizer. You're welcome. Before you got uh, wait, before you guys play it, there are two versions of it. If you listen to both of them with headphones, you will hear the difference. <laughs> it's your call on which version to play. I recommend of playing the first version. Uh, we're playing both. <laughs> Here's some info on what you will hear. Two years ago, I made a similar audio of the crew reading my emails. The audio was played on episode 92. Just listen to the last five or six minutes of the show. This is the same. But this is bits from 2016 season to this season. Yes, Rob, there is guitar. <laughs> Niners 21, Buck 17. One more thing before I end this. 
Thanks, Joe, for telling me a mulligan, what a mulligan is in golf. Hearing Rob's response as you read my email, I was wishing that I had a do-over with that email. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving from the Matterson. Well, so Ma- this is part one? Chris? This yeah. is the first version. Okay. All right, here we go. second version holy shit wow thank you matt that was uh beautifully erotic we're not done i know well two versions, i just want to thank him Ready? Well, rip it if it's the same thing we're not <laughs> speak for yourself i think we should be taking a vote on anything we do here <laughs> <laughs> Different intro. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a track play? No echo. Oh. Not like it was. I like this game where we decide which, what's different. I found this post and started reading it and had to stop reading it after. Alright, we're not going to do this whole thing again. It's way more clear in this one. Right? The volume's higher on the talking. Yeah. But if it I don't does, know why you would say this one This one's better. Like, for what we try to do. I don't see we're cutting this, right? See? No. That's, that's, okay. that's we got it. Thank you, man. We appreciate the, the beautiful <laughs> holiday cheer you just brought us. Oh, I know when I get it. It. I know guitar. when I get into my car, that's exactly what's going on for the ride more home. More guitar, more everything. Yeah, I mean, if you got a drum machine, we get that going. Um, it came in as we were recording, I believe. You got to go, Baba? Right? You uh, did this last week. We did this. I remember you saying Thunderdome at Boys. I remember... 
Yeah, yeah so thanks for being on Spotify. Yeah, take yeah. the Wonderlick wow. test. Yeah, we did this. Um, do right? you? Wait. I definitely I read that. Maybe I read it to myself. Yeah, I don't recall that. Well, it came at, no, it came at 10.30 p.m. Yeah. It was right after we finished. Because yeah. remember, I texted you guys yep. and said, LOL, look at the... Um, Read it. Look at them coming. Wait, but hold on. What about Cole M, too? That's this one. Yeah, that's Thunderdome. Okay. Rip it. Oh, okay. I definitely read this. I might have read it to myself. Yeah, no, agreed. There was two that came in that we didn't read last week. Okay, yeah, Cole M, Thunder Dome. Hey, crew. Been a while. Hope this makes it in before recording time. It, Fuck, it didn't. <laughs> fucking lost it at the end. Again, same fucking story. Are we only allotted one blowout game a year and we wasted it on the Raiders? <laughs> We had that shit in a bag and threw the lead once again. Maybe there's just too many quarters in this game since the Niners can clearly only hold it together for... Who farted? That was me. Oh, you're a fucking pig. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're going to make your fucking friend late because I won't fucking work <laughs> in these conditions. I'm, I'm going to shit my pants I'm next good. week. I would have sniffed more shit if I knew this was happening. Um, you just did sniff a whole bunch of shit. Uh, I need, yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, maybe there's just too many quarters because, in this game. Uh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> Since the Niners can clearly only hold it together for three goddamn quarters. Bye week special prediction. Joe Big Dicks his way into his first victory, but sacrifices also tears his ACL in honor of Jimmy G. <laughs> we, I, uh, we definitely did this. We didn't read no, this. No, we definitely did not, Rob. Definitely did not. They came in after the fact. I also suggest you guys take the Wonderlick test somehow, as well as some kind of timed throwing a football challenge that tests speed and accuracy, maybe similar to a quarterback in the pocket after a snap. I don't know. I'm sure this year will be entertaining. Thunderdome that shit, boys. Peace out, old faithful Cole. P.S. Thanks for being on Spotify. Makes my makes listening to you degenerate so much easier. All right. I got to get the fuck out of here because this stinks. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this thing's fucking <sighs> Chad says bye week of the travesty of a season. Hello, Gold Blooded Podcast folks. First off, responding to Steve's respond request during episode 166, the Epo- epic battle of the bay. You guys absolutely butchered the pronunciation of my last name. LMAO. Joe was so far off with his attempt, but Steve was close. It's pronounced Shane Hair, even though it looks like Shoner. It's German, so most people get it wrong. My oldest son got quite the laugh out of listening to you guys spend 12 minutes getting through my email. (laughs) I truly am the 49ers. Yeah, the capital 49ers fan from Wisconsin. Not Washington, Joe. (laughs) He must have been really shit-faced reading the emails a couple weeks ago. You guys are great. All right, all right, enough with the small talk. Getting down to business. The Oakland game wasn't much of a surprise. I wouldn't be giving Nick Moans any dirty money nickname quite yet. After the Giants game, two Monday night choke fest this season, and now I hear they're flexing out the Sunday night game coming up. What the fuck? Week 10, offensive beast of the week goes to Matt Breda. Defensive beast of week 10 goes to nobody. They fucking stunk worse than weak old shitty diapers smoldering in a garbage on a 95 degree summer day. Steve, we need some sort of positive spin on this as Joe is losing his mind with all the losses this season. I can't blame the guy for slamming the concoctions and pretending we're still in the running for the postseason. Joe, you're great, man. Hope you enjoyed your vacation. I admire the commitment and dedication by Skype FaceTime in for contributing to last week's podcast. It wouldn't be the same without you. So, hey, how are you guys able to watch the Niner games being out on the East Coast? Sunday ticket through DirecTV or have a way to stream it somehow? A little bit of both, my friend. Depends on who you ask at this table. Um, I'm hanging in there and riding out the season, hoping for some sort of spark after the bye week to look forward to next uh, season. That is, if these Sallies can't can man up instead of getting hurt each week. I thought football was a man sport, unless you're the quarterback. <laughs> can't hit those prima donnas anymore. I read on CBS Sports that Shanahan sent a message to the locker room to get the team to reflect on how they want to finish the rest of the season. Also, on CBS Sports, seven players that might get Pro Bowl consideration. Matt Breda, Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle, Mike McGlinchey, DeForest Buckner, Richard Sherman, and Bobby Gould. We'll see about that. Well, until next time, adios amigos. Chad from Wisconsin. No Kendrick Bourne on that list. (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, 
Chad, if you want to look into streaming the game, uh, uh, fool around with the um, NFL Reddit streams. Reddit, like the... Yeah, if you want to do it for free. The blog website, yeah. If you want to is... pay for it, look into my stream. Can you give me a, f- a f- uh, free feed on the fight tomorrow night? Sure. I can. Oh, well, I could send you my thing, and you could do it on your thing, if you have a fire stick. For um, its pay-per-view, yep. uh, I do have a fire stick. Yeah, if you, I'll send you the YouTube links on how to download everything. So That's if, if I'm home, though, yeah, so I don't know if I'll be home. We'll see. There's a way to do it from your phone. Oh, yeah. So I, I've never done it, though, so that'd be, you know, new territory. Okay. Um, it's going to be sad, but I've Matt Matterson. Okay. Barrett Muley says, good news. <laughs> Hashtag suck for Bosa is back on. <laughs> All right, so that's that. So, everyone. That's the end of the emails? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, people don't care about us anymore. So, um, we're going to leave you guys. We hope you have a happy, a happy holiday. I don't agree in these holidays, and I'm forced to be a part of them because I fucking agreed to get married. <laughs> and so, that kind of sucks dickholes for me. But other than that, I hope everybody gets what they wanted from the Thanksgiving bunny. And My, my uh, offer's still on the table for next year. I know, but I'll, I, I'll I, adopt you and we'll reset I think, I think being miserable and making everyone around me miserable is, you know, is the only... I mean, you're good at it. Yeah, it's the only joy I get from the holidays at this point, you're so I'm really going to s- stick with that. Steve, you got anything to say on the way out the door? Um, I put on an absolute clinic this year for the uh, bi-week special contest, and I look forward to dominating again, again next year, even though Joe has guaranteed victory. Okay. A clinic. He won in one second left. <laughs> no, he did. You know, I won almost I, every year. I don't need to get into this. What, what do you plan on doing with your belt? Uh, fire mantle? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you won't. That's all talk. Yeah, you're I'll wife. put it up there right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In two days from now, your old lady's gonna be like, What the fuck is that? Tis, tis, boom, boom. Take it down. Put it in the basement with the rest of your garbage. Yeah. I know. All right. All right, everybody. We fucking out. Really?